to do on this show is to actually um, find stories, well, not necessarily find stories, but report stories, of course, that are trying to expose, um, like, crazy right-wingers, like the lunatics. Like, you guys know the lunatics that, you know, Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, these, there's guys way more further than, like, I think Michael Savage's name or something like that, but anyways, um, there's this one crazy Republican, and of course, he's a Tea Partier because that's the far right, uh, in America, so we're, we might start, like, something like this, kind of, uh, I know there's already, like, right-wing watch, which is great, uh, but there's this crazy, um, Illinois Republican whose name is, uh, Joe Walsh, and Ross Story is reporting on this, and they say, quote, former, for, sorry, former Illinois Republican Congressman Joe Walsh kicked off an online firestorm when he said on Thursday that President Barack Obama has always had an agenda against Israel because Obama is secretly Muslim. Um, <laughs> okay, so they also say, quote, the Obama is a secret Muslim canard is one of the enduring phantasms of the right-wing post-truth era, a throwback to when Republicans simultaneously accused Obama of being a Muslim while loudly declaiming his Christian, Chicago Christian pastor, Reverend Jeremiah Wright. Okay, so that whole Reverend Wright thing is crazy, too. I mean, Republicans care more about Reverend Wright than they do any policy position, especially these kind of crazy people. But this whole Obama's a secret Muslim thing, and more to the point that that's why he's against Israel, I would totally deem that, that point wrong because he's not against Israel. He gave him $38 billion. He's gave, he's gave them weapons over and over again, and they've sucked up Netanyahu so many times. And I think that the only reason that they allowed the UN Security Council vote, again, the way the Security Council works is that there are, I think, five countries that can do it, that can completely veto, which is the U.S., I think France, uh, France, Britain, Russia, and then I'm not sure what the last one is. I forget. But anyways, the point is they could have vetoed it and it would have been vetoed. But again, I don't even think the U.N. resolution forces Israel to do anything. I think it's just, oh, we're condemning you guys for doing it, which it, which is often what U.N. resolutions are, right? They don't actually do anything. They just write, we condemn this. So it's definitely a step in the right direction, but it still doesn't do anything.